Council of Christians and Jews Victoria acknowledges the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first peoples of Australia, the traditional owners and custodians of the lands and waters throughout this continent. As such, we recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and community, and we pay our respects to their peoples, their cultures, and to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Together, we work actively for reconciliation, justice, equity, and healing. Welcome everybody to this launch, this e-launch of Gesha 2020. My name is David Schutz and it's my great privilege to be the editor for this edition of Gesha. This is a very unusual situation that we are in. We started off at the beginning of 2020 aware that this was a year of crisis. It was a year of crisis in which we were coming out of a terrible period of drought in Australia. We were also uh, coming out of a time of enormous strain and pressure with the bushfires in Eastern Australia. And so there was a great debate about climate change going on. And we thought that this would be the topic that we would try to address in Gesha this year. Of course, things changed very quickly. I think we had two face-to-face -face meetings as an editorial committee before we were reduced to meeting via Zoom. And we've been using this medium ever since to communicate with one another. And now we're using it to make the launch. We realized that while our theme of religion and ecology, which we had chosen, would still be able to run, we had to somehow work in the great situation in which we were dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. And we thought that the best way to do this would be if we incorporated it into our theme on religion and the ecology, and that we then issued it in a format that we have never issued Gesha in before, and that is a series of electronic issues which we would distribute so that it could get to your desk uh, while the issues we are addressing were still going on. We nevertheless wanted to make it something that wasn't just all about doom and gloom, and so our articles are looking towards the joy and the hope that our religious traditions can bring to our crisis that we're facing at the moment. And along with the very good and very thoughtful articles that we've been able to source for this first edition of Gesha, we're also including poetry and art and cartoons and biblical commentary that can inspire us along the way. And I'm really thankful for those who have provided these. Of course, we're always very thankful to the support we receive from our patron, who is the Governor of Victoria, Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Dessau. As patron of the Council of Christians and Jews Victoria, I extend my greeting to the Council and to all its members and friends upon this historic e-launch of Gesha 2020. The Council's work to help strengthen our society in dialogue and friendship has never been more important than in this difficult year when Victoria has faced the dual challenges of devastating bushfires and of course the COVID-19 pandemic. History shows us the importance of people from different faiths and cultures coming together to avoid the division that can emerge so destructively in trying times. Well, the theme of this year's journal, Religion and Ecology, is also timely. We have the opportunity to reflect upon the earth as our common home, a reflection that calls for solidarity with one another as we seek to find a way towards a united and sustainable future. The perspective of faith and religion are important in this conversation so that we can see the deeper meaning and impact of our decisions and actions. I commend this and the following issues of Gesha 2020 to you for consideration and for enjoyment and I thank the Council for its continuing contribution to cross-cultural and interfaith dialogue.
I'm joined by a wonderful team of people who have been a great support throughout the whole production of Gesha this year. And I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Dr. Philip Bliss, Newton Daddo, Faye Haskin de Broen, Alex Katz, Reverend Colleen O'Reilly, and Mark Walsh. I thank them all for their support. They're with me here today as we have the privilege of launching Gesha 2020. My name is Mark Walsh. It's been a great pleasure working with David and the rest of the team putting together this first of three editions of Gesha 2020 on religion and ecology in a time of crisis. As I read through this first edition, I was particularly struck by Jonathan Karen Black's article, Leading Jewish Voices on the Environment. One of these voices belongs to Rabbi Arthur Vasco, who has been a leading voice in this field since the 80s. He authored a petition signed by 500 rabbis and titled Elijah's Covenant Between the Generations to Heal Our Endangered Earth. The petition calls for a social transformation. This brief excerpt reminds us that our sacred task requires affirming not only the biological ecosystem, but also a cultural social ecosystem. The modern word for how the diverse images of God become one. Jews, indigenous nations, Christians, Muslims, Unitarians, Buddhists, Hindus and many others. Each community must bring their own unique wisdom to join in the name of the one who is the interbreathing spirit of all life, whose universal breathing is the nameless name, the still small voice, that supports and suffuses all the many diverse names of God in many cultures and communities. That interbreathing spirit supports and suffuses all life on planet Earth. It is in this spirit of interconnectedness that I commend this first of three editions of Gesha to be published this year to you. I hope that you recognize in the words, images and poetry something of your connectedness to one another and to this planet that we all call home. I'm Faye Haskin de Broen. As we know, COVID-19 has encouraged us to think outside the box and to be creative and flexible in how we bring this journal together. Not only will it be presented in three issues over a period of time, but we were all able to think more broadly its contents. There is the wonderful artwork on the cover showing our environment in bloom, Autumn Evening by Bev Hardich, and then the devastation of fire in artwork within the document, an Australian nativity in the burning bush by Glenn Loffrey, all highlighting the impact on the environment and the impact on life. I really liked Sarah Bachelard's article. She refers to the year of cascading crisis, bushfires, drought, rain, the global pandemic, and the murder of the African-American George Floyd, all so current. She further refers to manifestation of pressure, fractures, and suffering and that we know whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. What was really highlighted for me was the notion of integral ecology. Everything is connected. The bond between humans and the natural world, a concept supported within this stunning document, also brought to our attention by Pope Francis in Laudato Si. There is much to reflect on. Hello, my name is Newton Daddo, a Baptist member of the Council and a member of the Geshe Editorial Committee for a number of years. In this time of considerable uncertainty that is so daunting for many, I'm very grateful for what has emerged in terms of our online communication. And I want to pay a tribute to Mark Walsh and to David Schutz for leading us into the space, creating a sense of community and enabling us to work together. 
uh, to provide something that people will be able to access in time that will resource them in a very significant area of thinking. While we are preoccupied with the immediate demands of a COVID crisis, the issue of environment and sustainability and ecology hangs there waiting for our attention. So my gratitude to the fellow members of the editorial committee for what is emerging and will emerge over the coming editions as we have opportunity to reflect on this fundamentally important theme. Thank you. And this is my first time as a, a member of the Council for Christians and Jews and a member of the editorial committee. And I need to start with a confession because when theologians first started talking about theology and ecology, I thought, I'm a liturgical theologian. I don't need to pay attention to that. Well, haven't we all had a serious wake up call in the last few months? And so I was particularly struck by the image deep incarnation in the first article by Dr. Nathan Emanuel, and also by the poetry of Philip Harvey, who in one of his sonnets in response to Psalm 19 says this, it's high time we changed our way of thinking, but repairs and bills and old wounds intervene. And I think this edition of Gesha calls us all to go way beyond what we've known and really start to grapple with the real issues of our faith and our living in this created world in which we all share. I'm Philip Bliss. Uh, I'm a previous chairman of the uh, Council of Christians and Jews. Um, and I've really been really very fortunate to be on the uh, editorial board for the last few editions. Gesha has been published every year for the last, oh, well over 30 years. Um, and each year it takes on a theme. This year it's been such a natural flow into being able to discuss the world of religion in climate change and then plague. So we've really fallen into the topic and it's really built itself up. The artwork, the topics uh, have just blended in beautifully and I think we can be equally proud of this edition and the next two that will follow it in a very unique but really topical way of producing this so that it's available uh, easily for those now who are so used to being zoomed uh, into their dining rooms. So I commend this year edition and I've really enjoyed working with our editorial board, all, all of whom have been able to have great input into a great production. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alex Katz. I'm on the editorial board this year as well. Um, and I'm also uh, what probably the youngest member on, on the editorial board. The truth of the matter is that I actually didn't even know about the Council of Christians and Jews until I came across a copy of Gesher some years ago. And that first brought me into this organization. And ever since then, it's the intellectual um, creativity and intellect of this organization that has really inspired me and got me involved in this organization. And that's why it's been a privilege this year in particular to be involved in this editorial board and to produce um, a magazine in such a unique and different and timely method um, in three editions that hopefully everyone else will also get as much inspiration and joy from as I did. In fact, so much so um, that if, if you indulge me, I'd like to read something from one of the articles um, from Dr. Emmanuel Nathan, who's a lecturer in biblical studies at the Australian Catholic University, um, in, in, towards the end of his article, um, he said something that I think really sat with me for a while and inspired me. So here it goes. During this time of pandemic, we learn to grapple with unspeakable loss and suffering. It has been a harrowing and anxious time, but we also learn to experience presence in the absence. Human communities of solidarity arose spontaneously in the midst of suffering. There have been moments of deep pain and sorrow, but also of soul-stirring beauty. Environmentally, the effects of lockdown produced stunning glimpses 
of a world prior to the onset of rapid, rapid urbanization and mass production. Yet the lockdown has also strained us to the limits in terms of mental and physical health. The challenge and aspiration will be to remain as united in spirit and purpose past the pan pandemic as we were during it. It's articles like that and pieces like that that continue to inspire me. And for that reason, I commend this edition of Gesha to you all. So in this edition, we have some wonderful contributions. Our three articles come from Dr. Emmanuel Nathan, from Rabbi Jonathan Karen Black, and from Reverend Dr. Sarah Bachelard. The focus is largely on questions of the ecology in this first edition. And we are marking also the fifth anniversary of Pope Francis's encyclical on the environment, Laudato Si. In the future editions, which we expect to publish in the rest of 2020, we will be covering questions such as the economics of healthcare, the ethics of how we've responded to COVID-19, and also the challenge that this gives in parallel to the question of how we cope with climate change and look to the challenges that that gives us in the future. And while, especially here in Victoria, we're still very much coping with the situation of the current crisis, in the third edition, we're looking forward to what kind of world is it that we are hoping to emerge into? And what can the faiths, and not just our Christian and Jewish faiths, but also the other faiths bring into this space as we consider that future together? <laughs>